Well, hello everyone. I'm Sybil Starr and I am here to give the astrology forecast for the Pisces full moon lunar eclipse that occurs on September 17th or 18th, depending on where you are. So let us first look at the chart. Let's see, I'm going to screen share here real quickly. All right. So the Pisces full moon lunar eclipse uh, occurs here on the West Coast uh, on September 17th uh, at 7.34 p.m. Pacific time. OK, and so the uh, moon, the eclipse moon is at 25 degrees, 40 minutes of Pisces, and it is opposite uh, the sun here at 25 degrees, 40 minutes of Virgo. Okay. And it's important to remember that at the full moon, that the or <clears throat> that the moon has no light of her own. She only reflects the light of the sun. Okay. And so some other components of this um, full moon chart is, so uh, like I said, we've got, so the, the moon is here at 25 degrees degrees of Pisces. It's tightly conjunct Neptune at 28 degrees, 35 minutes of Pisces. And of course, Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. So this makes this an extra strong uh, Pisces full moon. Okay. Now there's also uh, what is called a grand earth trine. Oh, it's a kite with a grand earth trine. So what we have is we've got the sun here at 25 degrees of Virgo. It's trine Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn, trine Uranus at 27 degrees of Taurus, and then comes back. And so you can see it here. Here's the triangle, right? This blue one, it's kind of hard to see with all that other stuff in there, but there it is, okay? But then it's also a kite because it's got this tail, which, or we call this the release point that of the opposition of this the moon to the sun, okay? So it it makes a, a kite with like a tail. Okay. All right. And then there's also a T square because it also, the, the, um, uh, solar, excuse me, lunar eclipse is in a square to Jupiter. So th there's a lot going on with the actual energy of the full moon. Now we also have Venus. Venus is in her own sign of a Libra. 23 degrees, 54 minutes. And so she makes what is called an inconjunct. So we could say she's 24 degrees. Um, she makes what's called an inconjunct or quincunx, 150 degrees from the moon. Okay. And so that's, that's a, an aspect of adaptation. Um, it's two energies that maybe don't work that well together normally, but are yet asked to work together. Okay. Venus is also opposite Chiron and Eris, and she is trine Jupiter. Okay. And, and of course a trine is an easy flow. Okay. Uh, what else have we got here? Anything? Well, we do have Mars in a square to the nodes of the moon. All right. Oh, oh, we have one more thing. We've got Mercury opposite Mercury in Virgo opposite Saturn in Pisces. Okay. So we've got a lot in the Pisces Virgo axis. So that's what we're going to be talking mostly about, but there we'll talk about the other things as well. All right, so let us begin. What does all of this actually mean? So uh, this is a super moon. Um, it's a, well, it's a part, number one, it's a partial lunar eclipse. So it's not a really big one. And um, so just part of the moon will be covered. It will be par or, or, yeah, partially co uh, covered. And, and actually a lunar eclipse, what actually happens is, as I said, the moon has no light of her own. So she reflects the light of the sun. And during an eclipse, during a lunar eclipse, the shadow of the earth comes between the sun and the moon. So part of the moon is eclipsed by that shadow. OK, and so it's a super moon, which means it's really close to the Earth and it's going to be very big. It is partial. It occurs on September 17th here in, here in the U.S. Um, and east of the U.S., it will be on the 18th and it will be visible over much of Mother Earth, 
over Europe, most of Asia, Africa, North America, South America, the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, the Arctic, and Antarctica, okay? Um, and like I said, lunar eclipses always occur on a full moon. And what happens is, you know, the uh, our, uh, everything in our solar system is uh, made of the photons from the sun. And so when an eclipse happens and it blocks the light of the sun in any way for any length of time, it allows more cosmic energy to come in. With, um, and to enter the field and it impacts the electromagnetic field of Mother Earth. Eclipses are harbingers of change. They bring light to what has been hidden. And the full moon herself shows us the culmination of the intention that was set at the new moon. And part of the energy of the new moon was lifting the veil of illusion in our personal as personal lives as well as in the collective field, okay? Uh, this north node lunar eclipse is a north node lunar eclipse. And so the north node is our way forward and it often indicates a, a new beginning. And so uh, what happens at uh, the lunar eclipse is an influx of new elements that positively affect our personal lives and creates an opening for a new beginning. The uh, lunar eclipse relates to our soul and to the emotional body. It impacts our relationships, but also our relationships to the external world. So if you have planets or angles from 22 to 29 degrees of the Pisces Virgo axis, uh, it, you will have a, you it will be activated in your in your chart. okay, it'll be activated in your life. And often what happens during around an eclipse, something happens and then it unfolds for like the next six months with a lunar eclipse. The, it, the impact can last up to six months, okay? Um, and it is square, the Gemini, the other mutable signs of Gemini and Sagittarius. And so that's more of a challenge. And it's trying the other water signs, Pisces, it trines, Cancer and Scorpio. So um, that is a much easier flow of energy. Uh, the house, it, and, and, and like I said, it, it is often a harbinger of change. So it, whatever house that it's in, it may bring, it may bring some changes. Okay. And so let's just say it's in the fourth house, the eclipse, the eclipse moon happens in the fourth house. It can impact your home and family, but it's also with the, <clears throat> the full moon with the sun being in Virgo is also going to impact your career or public life. So it's, it's actually uh, both, um, like I said, it's the axis that is really active at the lunar eclipse. All right. And it's also important to know this is the first of several eclipses in the Virgo Pisces axis as the nodes of the moon will be changing into Virgo and Pisces in 2025. So they haven't been in Virgo and Pisces for almost 18 years now. Okay. All right. So what is the Pisces energy since that is the moon? So the Pisces archetype is the mystic. It is, which is about a conscious connection to the divine. Pisces is very creative and uh, imaginative. And the energy is known as dreamers. I mean, in the, our, 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 so our dreams may become very active during this time. So it's really important to pay attention to your dreams as well as let's say being a visionary dreamer. Like if you're working with other people, you might have some very, um, or if you're, you know, you might have some really great visions of what you want to see in your life, okay? Um, or just in the world, you know, it's, it's very psychic and intuitive. It can also be clairvoyant, okay? But one of the most significant things about Pisces is its sensitivity. It is, it is very sensitive to the suffering of the world. Uh, Pisces is a very challenging energy to, to, uh, 
have here on Mother Earth because Mother Earth is, is kind of harsh, whereas Pisces is super sensitive, uh, has diff diffuse emotional boundaries and can be like a psychic sponge. So it's really important to recognize that you might just simply be more sensitive to the field. I often say that Pisces are like shapeshifters. They can really feel the energy. They can feel what is going on and they can adapt themselves to, to flow with that energy or let's say to bring balance or wherever it is, if something is out of balance. Um, but it can also, like I say, be a psychic sponge and pick up things that don't belong. Uh, to you, such as, let's say you walk into a room and you're feeling good, you're having a good day, but you leave the room and you're not feeling good anymore. You're feeling depressed or sad. You may have picked up somebody else's emotional, uh, I don't want to say baggage, um, someone else's emotions, put it that way, what someone else was feeling. So it's super important to be um, really aware of your energy field at this time to, uh, if you're going to be out in public to maybe, you know, um, use the white light to protect yourself or when you come home from your day's work or whatever you're doing, um, to, uh, get in the shower and use a salt scrub or do a salt and soda bath or whatever you can do to cleanse your energy field. Okay. Uh, and I did also want to say that no matter what I say, <laughs> uh, I always find that uh, there's going to be people with Pisces energy that do not fit in a box. They are completely different than whatever it is I say. And so I also know that that's true too. Okay. All right. So uh, it's rule. Pisces is ruled by Neptune is the modern ruler. Jupiter is the ancient ruler. And I feel like there is still a very strong connection with Jupiter. OK, and, and Pisces energy can kind of be like the child taken by the fairies find it really difficult living in this reality and also find it difficult to um, discern what is real and what is not real because the world of the imagination is very real. It's really, especially Pisces children, I think can really walk in other realms, okay? But there can also be a, a sense of feeling lost because you're feeling like you don't quite get what's going on here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Pisces can be addiction prone due to that sensitivity. There can be a need to want to numb the feelings because they feel everything. And that's why it's so important to have good emotional boundaries to know really what is yours what and what isn't and, and how to be a witness instead of absorbing the energy. Uh, and another shadow of Pisces because it's ruled by Neptune is illusion, believing what we want to believe, but not necessarily what is true. Okay. Now, as I showed you, the moon is conjunct Neptune at 28 degrees of Pisces. And so this, this, um, um, expands it. This is increases the psychic sensitivity in the field. I, I really astronomically, and everyone is going to feel it. it, is, it may be extremely sensitive to what is happening around you. So all of the things I said about being a psychic sponge is going to just really uh, impact everyone um, because you're going to be able to feel the field in a really big way. Um, so once again, it's important to protect and cleanse your energy field and to recognize what is yours and what is not, because we are stepping into the great cosmic sea of the collective unconscious. And so it is a great time to actually do some great healing work in that field. Uh, it's a great time for gatherings to know that the collective field is so uh, accessible. So we, it, it is a time to really work together to lift the vibration of humanity and to know that if you're doing any personal work, you're also probably going to be doing collective work. Uh, whatever it is of yours that is attached to the collective may show up. And one of the most important things that I think the most important teaching coming from this though is about unity consciousness. It is Pisces and Neptune uh, have to do with that place where we are all one. And it's reminding us that everything is God. Everything is divine. Uh, 
We all come from this from the light of source. All people, animals, plants, Mother Earth, we're all different faces, having different experiences and perceptions, allowing creator to experience this creation. And so even those with whom you disagree or have a different perspective, to know everyone has a role to play in this stage of life and that everyone carries that divine spark. And compassion and forgiveness for self and other allows us to feel this oneness of all creation. Now, the Sabian symbol for 28 degrees of Pisces, which is Neptune, which I felt that symbol was really had really spoke in a really big way. And it is light breaking into many colors as it passes through a prism. And so what this says to me, once again, that we all come from the light, the source of all creation. And it is about awakening to our own true divine nature and our light within. That's the important thing. And to know everyone carries that light, everyone and everything. Um, that we are all divine. And uh, the intention and the energy of the, the new moon in Virgo was a lot about the unveiling, lifting of the veil. And so this is the true reality behind the illusion. It's the illusion of separation from source. We have never left the source of all creation. We are all source and we are all faces of creator having this experience, okay? And, uh, and, and we are all light, but as we individuate, we become fractals of the light to grow the greater reality, okay? And White Eagle says, true spirituality is consciousness of unity, a realization of the oneness of all life. This is a great, this, this will, I feel like the energy is such a high vibration that, um, it's really important <clears throat> to maybe go out in the forest, go somewhere where you can really ground the energy. And I think you will be able to feel this oneness if you slow down, make it something sacred and be in nature. The oneness will overcome you. I feel like it, it's a great opening into our consciousness. Okay. Now, the moon is also conjunct the star Markab in Pegasus. And... Um, and to know that Pegasus is the winged messenger, the divine messenger. They say he's the, he's the winged messenger galloping from the heavens. He, he carries messages. And Pegasus is carrying us from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Pegasus represents the shift in mindset from worshiping God to becoming your own God by acknowledging the divinity within. It's the same message. It's acknowledging our own divine nature. Pegasus is known uh, for a need for freedom, independence, and exploring the unknown. It is highly intuitive, poetic, creative, artistic, and connected with nature. So there is a spiritual message coming through in this eclipse to acknowledge our own divine nature and maybe some other great messages as well. All right. So the Pisces Virgo axis, as I said, it's always the axis, not just one, you know, one side went in the full moon. And so the P Pisces as, as a Pisces is the mystic um, Virgo is practical. So it is about the practical mystic. So it's walking a mystical path with practical feet. So it is bringing that oneness, that experience of oneness into your everyday life, into the realm of the physical to help elevate the vibration of the whole. Uh, Pisces and Virgo are both in service. Virgo is more in physical service, whereas Pisces is about spiritual ser service. And it's about listening to the small voice within our intuition that is our direct link with our higher self. And as we do, it brings in humility. Humili Pisces, excuse me, Virgo is very much related to humility, being humble. It is one of the gates of heaven. And there's a saying, only the humble see heaven. And so we are asked to have the humility of spirit to follow divine will, which is actually our soul plan. Our egoic will is what gets us off track. 
Our egoic will has to do with free will choice, and it is absolutely part of our experience. But there are times where as we're humble, and it's like it, we're it, we're being asked to surrender to divine will, and I feel like that's what this is about. It takes humility to bow our heads and surrender to divine will. But when we do, we bring heaven and earth together. Okay. All right. And then the other thing, of course, is the victim savior axis. And that's really strongly in the field. And so be being so sensitive, uh, it's feeling the suffering in the field, uh, feeling the suffering of others. And it may be intense, especially as we are feeling the oneness. They're going to be hypersensitive to suffering. But the key is to be the witness, to not go out and want to fix it, to hold that suffering in our heart, that feeling, and transmute the fear with love. It's about meeting fear with love because fear is always a part of suffering. So. <clears throat> and change is made by meeting the fear with love while allowing each person to have the experience they need to have, letting go of a need to control the outcome. People are working out their karma and their soul contracts, and we can be empathic, em empathetic, kind, compassionate, and not try to fix anyone. To stay in your own lane, as one would say. We also have Mercury in Virgo, opposite Saturn in Pisces. And of course, Mercury is the mind. So it brings in the mind in this. And so we may be having thoughts around feeling like a victim ourselves. So it's 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 the um so it's important to watch your self-talk because you can hear your self-talk and tell yourself old stories that are no longer true, that are victimizing stories. Start recognizing if you tell if you have any victimizing stories. Saturn asks us to take responsibility for our own lives, to be able to look at reality in the eye and 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 to know. Uh, let me just kind of go back here. So um it can feel like someone outside of ourselves is blocking or opposing us, but it is actually an aspect of yourself showing you somewhere that you may need to change your perspective. Your perception of reality needs to change and to be able to look at our situation with clear eyes and responsibility and to know that this is ours to deal with, but also know that spirit has our back your back in every moment, but it may not be with the desired outcome that your ego wants. That's the important thing is to have no expectations, to follow the energy, let go of criticism or blame and trust the process. Have the experience your soul wants you to have, surrender to divine will and treat yourself with kindness, with compassion and forgiveness. And to know this, th this is a moment of uh, a potential uh, a spiritual breakthrough. Okay. Now we also have Jupiter in Gemini at 20 degrees of Gemini, which squares of the eclipse. And Jupiter, of course, is the great benefic brings opportunities and blessings. And with a square, it may not seem like an opportunity, um, but say yes, even if we do not understand why. We can walk past, like an opportunity can show up and go, oh no, that's not for me. That, you know, well, if it's showing up, pay attention because it's part of this eclipse and eclipses are about change. And to know that miracles are in the field. Jupiter brings infinite possibilities when we let go and surrender. Now, Jupiter is conjunct the star Bellatrix in Orion. And many of you may have, uh, may remember the character in the Harry Potter stories of Bellatrix. And she was not very nice. <laughs> but Bellatrix is actually a star that brings great success, but always needing to look at the shadow. Uh, there are other stars where it just simply brings success, but not Bellatrix. She says, you have to look at your, your shadow. And I want to share just a little bit of the galactic history around Orion, because we are experiencing the echoes of the Orion Wars. 
the Orion Wars, they were wars that they had in that part of the galaxy for millions of years. And they had an just like Star Wars, it was they say the Star Wars movies were based on Orion. They had an evil empire, they had the resistance, they had masters, some of the greatest spiritual masters in our galaxy, as well as some of the greatest darkness. Okay. And um, they were known as the wizards of the Milky Way, they were masters of the mind. Um, and so when Orion is activated, it's about healing our mental bodies and the stories we tell ourselves. But more of the energy around Orion was about the Orions really knew how to use the mind. And they say the mind is amoral. Uh, it's not good or bad. It's just the intention behind it. And there were dark forces there that used manipulation and mind control because there are those who have actually taken on the role to be the catalyst for growth. And these are some of the tools they use. And so this is happening here. Uh, and of course, we're also, you know, being asked to have critical thinking skills because we know that this is going on, but we are being pushed. We are the, the, we are being pushed until we realize that the real battle, the battle that is most important is the inner battle between our higher and lower selves. And it is about the integration of dark and light and the integration of the shadow material. And ultimately, this the uh, whole constellation of Orion in the galactic history ascended. And they ascended once they realized that as long as they fought the battle in the outer world, it was going to continue, that the real battle is within. And it is about healing the polarity consciousness, the mentality of the us versus them, that truly we are all source. We've all come from source. And so Venus is also bringing some uh, wisdom in this area. So Venus is goddess of love. She's in Libra in her own sign. And so Venus in Libra is very much about inner balance, serenity, inner peace, beauty, harmony. That's what she loves. But, you know, Libra is also the sign that is most out of balance, seeking balance. And so she is in conjunct this or quincunx 150 degrees from the, uh, uh, the full moon, the eclipse moon. She's opposite Chiron and Eris <clears throat> and she's trying Jupiter. So she's got, makes a lot of uh, aspects. She's also conjunct the star Arcturus and Arcturus is a very high frequency star. The beings that come from there are very involved with mother earth in many ways. And they are masters of inner peace. They live in a state of unconditional love. And one of their teachings is that we can only have peace in the world when we have peace in our hearts. The external world is a reflection of the inner world. And really where it starts with ourselves, we must be at peace with ourselves. That is the, where it starts. And it's also, it's about healing the divide. And, love, and once we have peace within our hearts, we really can heal the divide, love one another. And it may require making alliances where you do not agree 100% on everything but where you can find common ground. This is what this is about. It's, it's, it's about having, ha, connecting with others and finding common ground. Uh, I've shared last month, uh, the last video, and I'm, I'm gonna share it again, that I'm gonna be going to an event that I'm calling Heal the Divide. Um, it will happen in the energy of this eclipse. Um, of where that field is open. The field of oneness is open with the ability to connect and find common ground. That's how we heal the divide and what is in the highest good of all, okay? Now, the kite configuration that I talked about, the grand earth trine, um, which is the uh, sun, Pluto, and Uranus, it is very much about manifestation on the material realm big changes um, with, especially with Uranus and Pluto involved, but they're trying. So they're a little easier flow changes. And the moon Neptune, like I said, is the release point of that kite. Uh, 
And so we may find ourselves shifting dimensions and timelines. I just want to uh, share that. So that's why it's so good to go to the woods, to ground, uh, to ground yourself. And um, I want to just say sometimes when I'm shifting dimensions, I get really nauseated and it's just super important to be grounded. Okay. During this time, because the energy field is really expanding, very expansive. Okay. And to know that miracles are in the field. And so focus on the kind of world you want that is based in love and compassion and it will manifest because we are dreaming a new world into being the veil is lifting with more accessibility and understanding of the quantum field it's a time of envisioning the kind of world we want pisces is very visionary energy and if we focus our, and often creating in the quantum field is we start with visioning i remember this um article I read one time, I think it was about Michael Jordan, that he, how he got so good was because he used creative visualization. And so start envisioning the kind of world you want, what you want in your life that is aligned with your highest good and with love. And um, it reminds us as well that the, this, uh, uh, that we are never alone, that we can always ask for help, the realm of the invisible. There are so many uh, from the galaxy here to help us make this shift. And we just have to ask for help, ask our guides, our angels, our star nation relatives. Um, as I said, we are in a field of miracles when we can, and when we can trust the process and surrender to the oneness. We can feel the vibrational field of the oneness as it becomes more conscious and accessible when we allow ourselves to feel the unconditional love and compassion of the universe. With this lunar eclipse, we can experience the oneness as it is our own true divine nature. All right. Well, wishing you all a wonderful month where it's some beautiful energy coming up. It'd be really good to work with it, to create real change in our life and in our world. And um, if you like this video, please check like and subscribe. It's really helpful to me. If you're interested in a reading, uh, I have all my information in the description box. And so um, blessings to all and namaste.